Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is ninth video of our series where we are deploying Palo Alto virtual appliance on Microsoft Azure platform using Microsoft Load Balancer. In ninth video, we are going to configure, uh, configure and provision external load balancer. So this load balancer will be used for uh, for the inbound traffic. If you look at our solution design diagram, so this is the external load balancer that we are going to provision now. So this will be used for all the inbound traffic. For example, if you have a web server or RDP servers or file servers or any, any server that you want uh, to be uh, accessible from outside, if you want your customers to access that web server or application or anything, uh you want them to to access it from outside you will have to configure uh in uh, inbound policies using this external load balancer this external load balancer will receive all the traffic from outside and then it will pass on the traffic to the firewalls based on its configuration so the benefit of configuring this external load balancer is even if your one firewall goes down let's say whole uk uk south zone one uh, goes down still your customers will be able to access your uh, your applications your web traffic using the firewall which was deployed in zone two of uk south similarly um, right now we have two firewalls model but if you if you want you can configure another firewall in uk south zone 3 region so let's go back to our azure portal and we'll start the uh, configuration process go back to your azure portal go to resource groups uh, we will provision in dnet underscore lp resource group click on create type in azure load balancer Click on create load balancer. Make sure it's the Microsoft Azure load balancer. Make sure subscription, resource group, region, everything is good. Give it a name. In my case, I'm giving it Palo LP EXT01. It will be standard SKU, but this is the setting that you need to pay special attention to. In type, make sure it's public before in the previous video we created an internal load balancer now we are going to configure a public load balancer in there it's regional that's fine go ahead and configure front-end ip add front-end ip so for this load balancer the front-end ip address will be the public ip address all right so let's give it a name it will be Palo PIP. I'll change it uh, PIP fan, but instead of FW, I'll make it LP and I'll name it 01 because you can configure more than one public IP addresses on, the, on this uh, load balancer. IP version 4, IP type, IP address. You can also configure IP prefix if you want a range of IP addresses. Choose a public IP address. Just copy the name. Create new. Zone redundant. Because this is uh, this IP address is going to be assigned on the load balancer, which is zone redundant. So you should be configuring a zone redundant IP address as well. Because firewalls were not zone redundant. We were, we were defining a, a zone manually, but for uh, load balancer, we'll go with the built-in configuration of, uh, of uh, Microsoft. So now we, that we have it, uh, configured the public IP address, leave gateway load balancer as it is, click add. Now go to backend pools. We can add backend pools from here as well. 
or we can or if so, it's your choice whether you want to configure it now or later once the resource uh, is provisioned so backend pool ext01 virtual network it will be palo rg vnet lp again i'll go with nick but if you want you can go with ip address as well now here we need to add both the untrust interfaces of the firewall because external load balancer will be monitoring the external interfaces or the untrust interfaces of both the firewalls so here i'm gonna select untrust interface for both the firewalls click add make sure the ip address everything is good firewall 1 firewall 2 200.4 200.5 click save once that is done uh, I'll go ahead and preview plus create. Once the validations are passed, click on create. It can take few minutes to provision. Next step is to configure the health probe. That is the most important uh, step. Once the deployment is completed, we'll go ahead and create, uh, configure our health probes. And remember for external load balancer it will be port 22 ssh because that's how we have configured our firewall if you remember if you go back to firewall in policies we have configured a net policy to allow traffic from the untrust zone on port 22 and according to that we have configured our security policy our management profile uh, and our interfaces as well so this is the policy net policy that we have configured and we are allowing ssh traffic only okay let's go back okay load balancer is provisioned front end ip address is configured this is the front end ip address that is the ip address that we will use from to access our let's say web server or rdp server from outside in backend pool both firewalls are there now let's configure health probe click on add health probe ext 01 tcp port 22 add that's it uh, our configuration on external load balancer are completed when we configure an inbound uh, inbound net or when we want our service to be accessible from outside we'll configure the load balancing rule for now we'll leave it uh, as it is now click on insights it will take some time for load balancer to send the health probes and then firewall will respond back so it can take up to five around five to ten minutes for this load balancer to show the health status so i'll pause the video once the health status is uh, there or it's screen i'll show it to you meanwhile what we can do is we can verify if there is already a traffic from uh, on uh, from our load balancer on port 22 because for internal load balancer we are already receiving traffic on port 443 now i'll check if there is any traffic on port 22 already no not any traffic here let's check on 501 as well no so i'll pause the video and I, I'll get back to you maybe after five minutes. All right, seems like that uh, load balancer will not generate any traffic unless we configure a load balancing rule. So let's go ahead and create a load balancing rule. Though uh, we will configure the inbound net in later videos, but we'll just configure the load balancing rule in this video so that we can see traffic and uh, load balancer health status as well. So we'll name it load balancing ext01. Front end IP address will be our public IP address. Backend pool will be the one which we have already configured. Port, uh, because we'll be testing inbound net using uh, RDP traffic. So let's configure 3389. Health probe will be 
two, which we have already configured. So session persistence and other settings, I leave it as default. I will not change it unless it is required. So click on save. All right, so now that uh, this load balancing rule has been configured, we should see some traffic towards our firewalls. Let's go back here, refresh. Otherwise I'll pause video again and wait for a few minutes. Yep, we have started seeing the traffic. So it's from untrust zone to untrust zone this is the load balancer IP and this is our untrust IP address on the firewall 2 port is 22 and it's using the correct policy TCP reset from the client that's the uh, that's the message that we are expecting because uh, with port 443 you get TCP fin but port uh, SSH or 22 port 22 port you don't see TCP fin it should be TCP reset from client that's good all right so we should be seeing more packets like that good uh, i think that's good let's check on firewall one as well yep we are seeing a lot of packets now so now after some time maybe another few minutes yeah uh, this firewall status should be green so i'll pause the video again and uh, get back to you once both the firewalls uh, status is healthy or it changes all right so within a uh, few minutes both uh, firewall status is healthy on the load balancer so if you click on firewall status it's healthy same for firewall 2 status is healthy so that's good for now um, we are done with the configuration of external load balancer so that's all what we were supposed to do in this video this was the video number nine where we had to provision and configure the external load balancer now in next video we'll create a test vms and enable the vnet pairing so uh, we'll see you in next video meanwhile if you have any questions uh, let me know in the comments down below thank you so much see you again